I'm from Western City University. So uh, this project uh, is a collaboration between Western City University and Qatar University in Qatar. Uh, and we, uh, we're looking uh, into some good strategies to reduce fertilizer use. Uh, Okay, so uh, as everybody know, knows that fertilizer are really vital for agriculture, but we have those current issues, and I think this is this is not the first time. Here, just a few uh, well graphs showing the, the fertilizer uh, supplies, and uh, uh, Australia is a net importer of fertilizers because we only produce a fraction of fertilizer for our agriculture, but our agriculture and including protect cropping. Uh, has been heavily relied on fertilizer imported from Russia, from China, from other parts of the world. And uh, the COVID uh, pandemic and the recent uh, Russia, uh, Russia uh, Ukraine war had made, the, made it more difficult because you can see uh, here uh, the, the prices is, is, uh, shooting up at the historical high for all fertilizers. Uh, this uh, this really remind that uh, uh, remind us that uh, in order to achieve high yield and the quality, and uh, we also need to look at look at whether the growers can actually make a profit. You cannot uh, use uh, as as much fertilizer as you want or as you used to. We need to find ways to reduce fertilizer use. And this is just a table uh, showing uh, who are which countries are the. Uh, the producers, and you can clearly see China, India, uh, United States are the top three uh, producers of uh, 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 users uh, of uh, uh, fertilizer, and and uh, uh, and they also, uh, especially China, uh, export a lot. Then uh, then uh, then uh, Russia, Russia is also and, and other country combined also export a lot. But Australia is, uh, as I mentioned, is a net importer of fertilizer. Okay, so uh, in Australia, protect cropping, uh, the industry has been uh, very successful and has been continuing growing at a rate of probably 5% per year. And we see uh, more and more greenhouses uh, and high tech, mid tech and low tech uh, are being put up. And, and primarily the focus of the, the production uh, is really looking at the yield uh, and the quality has, has been uh, uh, now uh, been uh, really looked uh, uh, by researchers and also growers to improve the quality, but uh, yield is the primary goal. And to improve those uh, yield and fertilizer, uh, or in protect cropping, we have another term, uh, fertigation, fertilizer plus irrigation, uh, uh, is one of the key inputs. Uh, the, the fertilizer and the transport of Fertilizer from one country to another country, especially to uh, Australia, this is an issue. Uh, and uh, we uh, we also have uh, uh, we also have another issue is the Australian dollar has been uh, the value has gone down against the U.S. dollar and other currencies. So this means growers have to spend more money on fertilizer if they continue to uh, to, to use the same amount of fertilizer. And in Australia, there are no breeding programs. So we cannot really breed uh, varieties with more uh, fertilizer use efficiency. I think that in other countries like in the US, India and China, they're doing this. Uh, but of course we can import those varieties. Uh, but one of the good way for uh, reduce fertilizer use uh, or for, for keep the high quality uh, uh, produce and also maintain the yield is through management, especially uh, the sustainable management of fertilizers. So just go to the aim of the project. This project, we, we try to identify some uh, novel fertigation, nutrient delivery and management approach to grow vegetable crops, mainly uh, capsicum, eggplants and cucumber. And uh, we also have a research specific research question look at uh, uh, whether the reduction of overall fertilizer use and uh, such as potassium nitrogen uh, can still maintain the yield and quality and taste and nutritional value in greenhouse crops. Uh, we've uh, uh, we've uh, conducted a few experiments already. So we measured photosynthesis, yield, mineral nutrients, food quality, and gene expression in terms of uh, qPCR, but we're also uh, planning to do transcriptome analysis. 
and, uh, and metabolites to look at the, the, the actual quality attributes uh, in, those, uh, in those vegetables. And then another important part of, the, uh, of this project is uh, uh, using panels of uh, 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 potential customers, so we probably use students, to do the sensory evaluation to look at the quality. Uh, so far, we've done uh, three experiments, uh, three trials, uh, one uh, eggplant trial, one uh, cucumber trial, and one uh, uh, capsicum trial. And we're planning for a few more trials. So the, those in the dark are completed. We have different electroconductivity levels, uh, depend on the crop. Uh, we, will, we will run an, a potassium and nitrogen trial uh, in, the, in, the, in the next few years. So just quickly go through the results. Eggplants fertigation. This is a uh, this is a, an early trial during COVID, but we still managed to uh, to go through the crop. But the the data collected uh, collection was a bit limited, and we still haven't really finished all the analysis. Try, uh, but we're planning to analyze and publish it hopefully by the end of this year. So effectively, what we found is high and low fertigation. Do not really affect growth yield of eggplants so far, and the two uh, the two variety, Lydia and Tracy. Um, if you look at the uh, the growth rate, uh, fruit uh, fruit uh, number, and even the gas exchange rate, the difference is not that it is not that great. Even for fruit weight, uh, for some reasons, a very high uh, EC actually reduced uh, re reduced the fruit weight in one of the varieties, uh, Lydia, but not really affecting Tracy. And we also did some uh, correlation analysis. As I said, the uh, results are still being processed. Um, we uh, the second trial, the capsicum fertigation, uh, was that was conducted in twenty twenty two. Uh, two varieties, uh, the red uh, the red one uh, is uh, is called uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Tracy. Uh, one of the name. And the, the, the yellow one is a uh, uh, is a variety which has not been released by uh, by Sendienta yet. So uh, what we found is the high level of fertigation uh, does not improve yield and sugar content in both the red and yellow uh, capsicum varieties. Uh, in some cases, even the high uh, the high EC value uh, actually reduce uh, uh, actually reduce uh, reduce yield. So that means. Higher fertilizer is not that is essentially uh, required, and EC two point four five is usually the industry standards, and the other one is just the two extremes. We we, we try to push it to low end and also push it to high high nutrient to look at the the uh, the difference, um, and and uh, uh, also interestingly we found a low level of fertigation, so reduce the 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 fertigation uh, level by by by. Uh, well, 70 more than 70 percent uh, does not reduce the post harvest quality of capsicum. So this is quite interesting. So this gives us uh, some uh, uh, way of uh, potentially grower can can manipulate their uh, fertigation to save uh, to save fertilizer. Uh, also, we found it very interesting, but uh, still I think we need more more work to be done here. Uh, high EC uh, in capsicum actually reduce the fruit potassium and calcium content, which you all, you all know potassium content, uh, calcium are very important uh, for human uh, 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 for human health. So really, this is a uh, uh, this is something interesting we need to explore in the future as well. The last trial, uh, which was more recent, cucumber fertigation, uh, and uh, the the second uh, second half of the twenty twenty two, yeah, we uh, we had two varieties growing and a lot more data, but I'll just, just quickly go through and give you an overview. So high and low EC do not affect photosynthesis yield, but it does change mineral nutrient uh, in leaves. So this is similar to, uh, uh, to what we found in, in, in capsicum. Uh, and, and the high and low ECs affect post-harvest quality, but it depends on the genotype. One genotype, uh, Le uh, the Lebanese, doesn't really been affected much, but the uh, the continental has a, 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 a the the the, the, the post harvest trait has some uh, has been affected by by the uh, uh, by the ECs. We also did uh, some preliminary uh, experiments on gene expression. Try to look at, uh, for example, the, why the potassium has dropped. So we we did some uh, experiment on looking at the, the gene expression, like the potassium channels KT three HKT uh, uh, in those uh, uh, cucumbers. 
uh, they show a very different pattern, but you can see uh, the, the expression levels are quite different. So we need to understand that's why we will go through the other two omics, uh, transcriptomics and the metabolomics to look at uh, the, the actual underlying mechanisms for, uh, for those changes. Okay, to summarize, we, uh, we, we, uh, we generally found that uh, high electric conductivities or high fatigation does not really significantly improve yield and quality of the tested vegetable. So this is kind of slightly against the norm because of, of for growers. Growers usually say, okay, uh, usually to some extent, a higher, higher fertilizer is, is, is usually, uh, usually better than, than, than low fertilizer. And we also found that low EC can maintain yield quality in some genotypes of the tested of vegetables, not all of them. For example, uh, one of the cucumber varieties uh, uh, did uh, have some, uh, some reduced, uh, uh, reduced quality traits. Okay, uh, some more experiments. So we, uh, we are uh, going to start another trial in the greenhouse on cucumber with different potassium levels, as we just mentioned. EC trials are completed. We are now going to manipulating only one uh, one micronutrient, uh, uh, micronutrient. So we will do the gene expression analysis, metab uh, metabolite profiling, and sensory evaluation. We uh, we hope to understand the mechanisms why those, and then and then provide more advice uh, to Australian and, and uh, Qatar Qatarian growers in the future. I would like to thank uh, Future Food Systems and Qatar National Research Foundation for the financial support and the PhD students and master's students and others involved in the project and also the project members. And uh, thank you to all Future Food Systems CRC staff and students for the, uh, for the joint work and the collaboration. And also, uh, I think the students have really enjoy enjoyed their, uh, uh, their communication with other students in different parts of, of the CRC. Thank you.